Jennifer Butler, thank you so very much for being here. Thank you. You are just a vivid picture, and we do this so rarely. I'm hoping all of my listeners and today viewers, watchers understand that there is a reason why we're doing this, and it is so very important. And I'll tell you the the real truth behind audio only. First of all, it allows me to do podcasts in my pajamas. That's always <laughs> a benefit. And nobody has to know that I've just come in the door from a run and I'm literally glowing, glistening, or otherwise people say sweating. But here today, it's very important to me that you actually see in motion what's happening. So Jennifer, before we dive into literally what what we're talking about and addressing, what I would love to know is how did you get started? How did you start doing color for other people and realizing the power in it for them? Well, I was living in New York and I got a phone call. It was about eight o'clock at night after work. And the person said, you know, I, I think you have some some ties with the fashion industry. And I said, well, yes, I have a few. And we said, well, the Hunger Project is giving a major symposium and we need to dress the moderator and it's setting the whole tone of the event. And so so when she arrived in New York, she had this beautiful color fan. And I I just, what I, when I saw the fan, what I saw was her. Mm-hmm. And I, you know, usually when people wear colors, they have an image they're presenting. But I had more access to what I call her authenticity. Mm-hmm. And it was fascinating. I thought, wow, I, I better learn this. I'm in fashion. And so that led me on a journey. Uh, actually ended up living in a, a spiritual ashram in Santa Monica in the early 80s and finally found my master teacher who created the whole thing. Her name was Suzanne Cagill. And then, of course, the, they, they did a mass marketing of the Four Seasons and Suzanne took her information away from the market because she felt it was really a journey to authenticity. And this, in a way, the the love story is that Mother Nature has given us mm-hmm. this invitation to be our, our ourselves, mm-hmm. and and she's given us all the keys through Mother Nature, and yet we have the choice, right? So if I'm with self doubt, I think something's going to look better outside myself. Mm-hmm. Right. If I don't trust myself, I'm going to look at a magazine for the answer instead of looking at me and knowing that I'm whole and complete exactly the way I am. So that's why it's really empowering. And I feel like a strong ally with you because we're really supporting women's health. Mm -hmm. So very true. And gosh, wow, did that resonate with me and made me really, I felt that. (laughs) (laughs) Like on a visceral level, because I think that's so true that, you know, looking for what is my voice and what is the voice that I've got as I'm talking to our listeners right now? And is it based in me, what I know to be right for them, or am I following other people and maybe Mm -hmm. trying to assume someone else's voice? And there's just such a huge difference in being one versus the other. So let's talk a little bit and spoiler alert for everybody. And many of my listeners, watchers, or people who are on social media with me have already commented um, when I had a recent photo shoot uh, and started using those photos, of course, I was you were dressing me, right? You literally were, you know, helping pick my palette and, and everyone comment, well, not everyone, but a lot of people comment on whoever took your pictures, nailed it. But I think what they really meant is what you're wearing and the way that is representing you is just so good. It's, it's just so authentic. And when I look at what I had done the year before, versus this fall, this past fall, world of difference in real, fake, authentic, just, you know, looking like someone else. So let's talk about that and and we'll share a little bit about my palette, but how is it that you end up nailing it for someone and really coming up with their palette? Well, I want to, I want to talk about something that's 
that's very important. It's kind of what we're brought up with. So Mm -hmm. as a little girl, my mother would say, well, why don't you, you know, buy what you're attracted to? And then after I had my colors done, I thought, well, I wasn't attracted to any of these. I'll show you my palette. This wasn't what I was attracted to originally at all. (laughs) I mean, it's what I'm wearing now. And I had 10 years in the fashion industry. I was trained at Bloomingdale's. But I realized that everything I had in my closet was opposite of me because I was buying what I was attracted to, which is the opposite of me. Mm, And so there's, I, I think, a learning in a way for all of humanity of, in a way, the question is, what does it take to be true to myself? How can I fall in love with myself every day all over again throughout my life? And how can I, I'm already created, here I am, right? How can I mirror my own coloring so I feel at home with myself? Mm -hmm. So the color palette, I'm trained to, first of all, paint all of this. And we start with the hair, skin, and eyes. So here's my hair. Mm -hmm. This is my skin tone, which is intimacy. And my eyes is the mirror of the soul. So I have the foundation of my life, Mm -hmm. right? The mirror of my soul and intimacy, self-love, and fellowship. So that what is what we call a sacred triad. So for you, we have Mm -hmm. your beautiful brown chestnut hair, Mm -hmm. your rose skin tone, and then your beautiful kind of tourmaline sort of dusty teal for your eyes, right? Mm -hmm. I've got my fan. Yeah, right? (laughs) And um, so that's, that's the core. And then all the colors emanate from there. And the reason these particular palettes are so important is we use harmonics that already exist in Mother Nature. And so the sacred triad is the beginning of that. Beautiful. And, and, and when the class, I teach a painting class, people can, I can start with my skin tone by using my eyes and my hair. I will get, with paints, I will get to that color. So that's how really consistent and congruent we are if we only look in the right direction, which is, of course, at ourself. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about what you're wearing. You're wearing the eye color, Mm -hmm. again, which is very centering. I'm wearing the purple, which is my support with a power color. Mm -hmm. So I'm wearing these two together. I'm what's called a vivid winter. And yet my palette is what we call more spring and autumn. So the colors are done individually, which is really important because I'm only seen through my coloring right? Mm. I don't show up as a human being without my pigment. So that's really where the science of humanity is. And then I do want to show you my, my vision boards. <laughs> so I'll hold them up to, up to me and you'll see only one will match. But we begin with spring, which is new beginnings. And this is in a way how you are dressed. You want to show some of your colors mm-hmm. yeah. that you have there. Yeah. So this is how you were dressed before. Yeah. Here's me before the very pink dress the the bright pink almost neon i don't know what i was thinking right and then uh really the bright green, green. so yep. yeah that was i was drawn to all of those just super brights and uh, no longer so let's look at where you ended up mm-hmm. so you ended up here so this is the comparison mm-hmm. so this is how you were dressed before and this is how you ended up mhm and you can see this is really too dull on me. Um, I tried autumn for a while, which doesn't go with me. Mm-hmm. So it disconnects. And you'll watch my face now. This is where the connection is. See, I show up here. But I dressed all the seasons. I think that's why the goddess decided <laughs> that I could do this work. <laughs> I needed a lot of help. It was what we call the, it's called a sublimated personality. So Mm -hmm. because I didn't trust myself, I grew up with five brothers as an only girl and I didn't trust who I was, right? I didn't know to be this was way too strong in my family. So, Mm. um, and my mother, I tried to be her. As you can see, this is very confusing and I'm over here. So that's, so I want to say something also about our, our mothers because, you know, we're taught as young girls to pattern ourselves after them. My mother was the opposite of me. I was actually the archetype of my father, and yet he had five boys, you know, are you know going after his design and his elements. So 
I was very mixed up until I had my colors done. Then all of a sudden, oh, okay, this is who I am. I can trust this. This is what I can dress. It may feel a little bit much, which it did for a while. It felt like I was kind of very um, kind of out there. And we have to have this comfort of being willing to be seen, right? That's the other part of this. Mm -hmm. Am I willing to be seen and really trust my authentic beauty? So that's, you know, it's more, I would say, if I looked at where the knowledge came from, it would have been from the ancient temples of Egypt, right? Because they understood vibrational energy. And now and, we are just coming full circle to, to, to actually talk about that in mainstream. It's so yes. interesting. Well, in a way, when you're teaching us about health and vitality and exercise, mm -hmm. you're keeping our life force alive. Mm -hmm. And I'm doing that with color, knowing yeah. that it's, it's not about image or fashion. I mean, we can talk about that. We certainly go out and go shopping and I do wardrobing and all of that's part of it, but it's more from a place of who the person really is. What happens when someone like me <laughs> wears colors that really are not in their best presentation or representation of themselves? Not authentic. I feel you know what, for me, I had a lot of self-doubt um, and I was always trying to find a way to look good. So I always felt the answers were either beyond me or outside myself. So when I had my palette done, it was a homecoming. Um, I felt other people could trust me, that my word had meaning, right? Because I was living my truth. Mm. So it was a, a very big switch for me. Mm -hmm. And I would have to say, to echo that, so I often would wear that pink dress. I would wear that at meetings, like mastermind meetings where I was networking, or I would wear it on stage. I believe I wore that to my son's college graduation. And what I remember from wearing that, and of course I didn't know any better, to you know, fast forward a couple of years later, having a deeper, darker, uh, kind of a burgundy dress that I tend to wear instead was that I just felt, like you said, at home and kind of in my body, not outside my body. It wasn't like I was wanting people to look at me for what I wore. It was like I was wanting people to see me. Yeah, and I think it's a different access of being Right. Mm -hmm. so, so when I'm being myself, then you have access to your being and you have access to being yourself. You know, so there's just this beautiful dance. Mm -hmm. uh, when I get all the women together, we do a clothing exchange. You know, nobody's trying to compete with everybody. We're just trying to be the best version of ourself. Um, and I would also put this in this um, body of knowledge. It's not really a healing art, but it's really about learning to authentically communicate. So Virginia Satir, who created family therapy, was a very strong ally of my teacher because she said in the family structure, instead of having confusion, right? See, these are, these are my colors. So I don't need to wear my mother's pink or my father's olive, which I was wearing before. I, I wear this. This is my foundation. This is the color in my bedroom, the, the screen behind me, mm -hmm. right? Everything is mirroring me so it's it's a nourishing nourishing my my myself so i can out go out in the world and really contribute what i need to because i don't have the attention i am whole and complete as a mm. human being in my own coloring and i can take a stand for myself and what i believe in and that creates a credibility so if you go to my website it's these colors right yeah my home is in mm -hmm. these colors um and when people come here, there's a sense of comfort and accessibility that I don't think I would have had before. Well, and I, I'm distracted because you have the most beautiful eyes. So I just want to make sure I get that in there. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. But I would also love for you to describe what you call, and I'm still learning this concept, sacred geometry. Okay. What, what does well, that mean? Yeah. So we recognize... You know, if you look at the uh, Michelangelo paintings, right, and the Sistine mm -hmm. Chapel, I mean, there's mm -hmm. a 
harmonic and they have all these drawings about the geometry. So it, it just doesn't, doesn't belong to mother nature. It belongs to us. So if you notice the neckline you have is a deeper neckline and you have a longer face. Mm -hmm. So the shape of the face determines the neckline and the shape of your facial features help determine your accessories. So the width of this pendant, right, is mirroring the width of my face. Mm. Yep. So I have a more square jawline. Mm -hmm. yep. If I tried to wear a long pendant like you need, it would drag my face down. So we look at the proportion of the face for your height. We look at your facial features. A lot of people like to wear prints or they're decorating their home. The animal print here, I was looking at it, like um, how it's mirroring the shape of my eyes, right? Yeah. So we, it's sort of like, you know, sharing that we have everything we really need. It's just being... Um, you know, it's sort of like we, we're this divine experiment. So, you know, what if I dress this way? And, you know, for me, I get dressed up every day. I go to the farmer's market. Everybody remembers me. They now know me as, oh, you're the woman that does the colors. Yes, I am. <laughs> uh, right? Because it's, I want to still, I want to have a life story that's yeah. beautiful. And, so I dress up for myself. That's the other mm. thing important. You know, we have so many ways in this culture where we don't really have to care about that anymore. And yet from another place of our life force, that's what I get dressed up for is how do I support my life force? I could be going to yoga or an art museum or a movie with friends. And I'm always putting something special on. I always plan my weekends. These are my weekend activities. How, I, how do I want to show up for myself and others? I love that. I, yeah. I really also encourage all of our listeners and viewers that, you know, you may be exercising at home. Maybe you're not going to the gym. So many of my Flipping 50 students or followers are. However, I do think that what you're wearing matters to you. Yeah. It, it brings your own energy up if you feel good in what you're wearing and not just the way it fits. I'm talking about the color. And really for better form, you really do want to be looking in the mirror occasionally and checking that. So you're going to get that feedback. So you know, I'm in the habit of doing this when I find a brand who it seems to be very seasonal, but occasionally they will, you know, have something come out and it's in colors. I will just buy multiples like, okay, I'm just doing this because then I'll have them for a very long time. Yes. And it's like, I know this fits and I'm, I, these are my color. So I'm all over it. And you just heard Jennifer, right? She actually told me I want it for the record. She told me to go shopping for jewelry just so that we have that for documentation. <laughs> Talk about trending styles a little bit. How do we deal with that? Because I think sometimes we do like to indulge and be, you know, trending. And And what are your thoughts on that? Well, we're always ourself, mm -hmm. right? And see, out of self-love, I, I have made this agreement. I don't want to buy anything that's not me. So first mm -hmm. of all, we have to understand that clothing is this direct expression of our essence and of ourself. So I have a different level of commitment, like clothes matter in a di very different way, in a way I hadn't had regard for before I had my colors done. And so because I know that it's about my life force, um, I stay committed to what works for me. I, have, I know my silhouette is, is an hourglass. Um, I understand uh, the shape of my face. I understand visual weight if I'm buying a pair of eyeglasses. I understand what is the textural range, how much design I can wear. Um, so there's a whole, there's different, it's a different level of tools that I have for making choices. Mm -hmm. So it's beyond trend. I have my personal style that I'm committed to first. Mm -hmm. And then if something on trend works for me, then, then I choose it. Beautiful. Beautifully said. How, how is, authentic beauty, really ageless, because we are talking to a group of women who feels like 
potentially all the rules have changed recently yeah, and, right. and they may not feel like themselves, you know, yeah. at this moment, like where did I go? And, and so much about life is changing. Address that, please. Well, first of all, I'm 75, right? And I've never felt better or younger. Mm -hmm. So I just want to have that said for the record. Um, so I would say in terms of authentic beauty, is that the question? Say that a question again for me. How would that apply to like women in this midlife transition? Who, okay. This is what I want to say. Yeah. So your colors and your life force are a direct access to the goddess and to spirit. So when I talked about the springs being the sunlight, that's their access to their aliveness. Mm -hmm. For you, it's the twilight. For the autumn, it's fire. And for the winter, it's moon. So when I use that higher power as my access point, that's what supports ageless beauty, is mm -hmm. the human spirit. That's why it's ageless, because that's what we recognize mm -hmm. in each other right? We play music, we dance, we move, right? That's all accessing this higher power. So when I know that my colors are doing that, that becomes really important to me. What happens when, when we age, if, yeah, I mean, we know skin changes, um, you know, skin thins, do we lose or change in terms of our pigment? Do we, if mm -hmm. we've had our colors done, do we need to at some point have them done again? Yes. I just redid someone. She started, um, probably about maybe 10 years ago with very natural blonde hair. Mm -hmm. And so now her hair is more of a silvery blonde. Right. So I had to change a lot of the colors. So especially mm -hmm. <clears throat> the hair, skin and eyes all grow together in wisdom. Right. Mm -hmm. So my skin tone got richer. My hair got lighter. My eyes pretty much stayed the same. That isn't true for everybody. Sometimes the eyes are more green. When I redo the palette, sometimes they're more blue. You know, it's, it's sort of like if we are um, studying Fran um, you know, French and we live in France, it's gonna, we're going to have a different absorption rate. So the more you embody your colors, the more you grow into a new dimension of them. Mm. And sometimes it's softer. We, we don't know what's happening for you. It's your personal documentary, we say. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, right. So my, I thought with my hair going really white that I'd wear more pastels, but because I'm a vid vivid winter, the pastels oftentimes right now aren't really strong enough for me mm. because my skin tone got richer. So it's a fascinating study mm -hmm. really <clears throat> of humanity and our growth as human beings, right? We're spiraling upward in evolution mm -hmm. and we're spiraling upward in consciousness. So the consciousness now for authentic beauty is this agreement. I already chose what I look like before I showed up here. And the learning is, as a spring, my greatest fear is that I'm going to not be taken seriously. As a summer, my greatest fear is that I'm um, the vulnerability of my femininity. The greatest fear for autumn is, oh, I'm going to come on too strong. And the greatest fear for winter is I'm going to be too distant. Mm -hmm. So out of that fear, we dress another season. In my case, I dressed all of them because <laughs> <laughs> that's what I had access to in the fashion industry. So I was a little bit of a lost soul and I felt the colors really saved my life. So you mentioned you're 75. How old were you when you had your colors done the first time? It would have been in the early 80s when it first came out. And I had it done about 10 times before I met Suzanne mm. because there's many theories that you're either warm or cool. I'm both. And there's many theories that you can wear every color. It's a matter of intensity or value. And yet there's only one Jennifer Abbey Butler, right? <laughs> so I've got to be very specifically defined in my own coloring. And that's how, that was Suzanne's gift. 
Um, she started, I would say, in the 1940s with this body of knowledge. I, I think probably for women, it's much more complicated, but I do want to ask this because I know there are a lot of people thinking about this for their partners. Does this also apply to men? Oh my God, the man, I just did a man yesterday. Um, it was that his, sounded his, wrong. I'm right, it was his say. wedding gift. <laughs> and he came in and he said, no, oh, I don't know about this. I'm kind of here. My sweetheart paid for it. You know, I'm not, I'm not going to do you any favors, Jennifer, right? <laughs> And by the end, he said, oh, wow, there's something to this. So men love it. From a different place, I think for them, it's personal power. Mm -hmm. But a lot of our men love design and beauty. And it's such a, mm -hmm. I have to say, it's such a beautiful way to share life. Mm -hmm. right? You so understand true. your family, your friends. So talk about Talk about the difference that this might make in relationships. Just, I mean, whether you do, not necessarily other people, but how are you, how are we each relating differently to people when we're wearing what helps us find our authenticity? You know, I think, you know, from all the stories people have told me in these 40 years, I would say they stopped trying to change their partner. Mm, wow. Right. They have such greater understanding of the similarities, the differences. Um, you know, my summers um, move at a different pace. You know, for you, you're more process oriented. For me, I have black and white discernment. Right. So in a friendship, if we were going shopping, for example, um, I would have to understand your process of understanding. And yet, you might count on me for a black and white decision at some point. Mm, very cool. Right. Oh, so just that. knowing yeah. the fundamental way that mother nature is leading us through life in spring, it's creation in summer, it's sustaining energy in autumn. It's the harvest in winter. It's reflection. So I'm that part of the life cycle and it helps me call forth my friends, right. For different aspects we just had a reunion, right? And everybody was a different season, and eight of us women. Uh, we, they called me J-Ma because I'm sort of the mother. 